there's nothing more that I love than a lazy summer afternoon sitting in nature, listening to the sound of birds with a great book and my favorite food, tabbouleh, to accompany me. I love this dish and I'm really excited today to be sharing it with you because it's something really close to my heart and really special. It reminds me of my grandparents' home um, back in the Middle East and having family over and at dinner parties and weddings and every special occasion. You cannot have any Lebanese or Syrian special occasion without having tabbouleh involved in it. So I hope you enjoy my recipe and I really thank you for watching. Okay, I am so excited to be sharing one of my most favorite recipes, something that's really close to my heart. As I said to you earlier, tabbouleh is something that reminds me of family and friends and special occasions, and it is absolutely delicious. I'm sure most of you have at some point eaten tabbouleh. If you haven't, I don't know where you've been, um, but I'm gonna give you a real authentic tabbouleh recipe that you'll find anywhere in the Middle East and this was taught to me by my mother who obviously learnt from her mother and um, haven't. this is one of those recipes that I never touch and I really stay true to it. So let me take you through the ingredients list and we'll get started. So basically to make tabbouleh the biggest ingredients is parsley. Now it's really important when you get parsley that it has to be the flat parsley and not the curly parsley. Absolutely essential. If you're gonna try to make it out of curly parsley, please do yourself a favor and just don't even bother, okay? Really important. The parsley, we've got tomatoes, we've got cracked wheat, we have onions. You can use spring onion instead of white onion or Spanish onion if you prefer. We've got some mint, salt, pepper, olive oil, and lemon juice. The first thing that you do is actually pick the parsley. So before you chop the parsley, there's actually a method. Now, when I was a little girl and I was learning how to make tabbouleh, there's sort of like an apprenticeship program that you go through. So the first thing your mother will actually get you to do is learn to cut the parsley. So I'll do it like that, at the stem right there and make them all in a nice little bouquet so that they're all in a row. And the reason that we do this is when it comes to chopping, it's gonna make our job so much easier. So then we take, you can do a bunch. We're just gonna start off with a small bunch like that. Take our knife and we're gonna cut it really close so that we've got most of the stem off as you can see there. Okay, I'll just get rid of that. Now, the secret to getting it cut really fine is to fold it over as tight as possible and to use the knife to cut really as fine as possible. So the knife is just touching the edge. The tighter you can pack it in, the finer you're going to be able to cut that parsley. Okay, so that's how fine the tabbouleh actually is. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that aside. Now you can only imagine that was just that little bit how long that took. That was one bunch. I've already prepared three bunches of parsley in here. So to do all of that, that's probably going to take a good half an hour of chopping. Oh. oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. This is my mother. This is my mama. Hello. Say hi to all my viewers. Hello, girl. Oh. How are you? This is Poppy for you. The short black. See, my mom, if you come to her house, she'll always make you coffee and feed you. Yes, sir. So who taught you? How did you learn to make tabbouleh? I um, I learned from my own way. I saw from my mom, I saw my mom how she do it, and I just I learned it, practicing day by day, and then coming perfect. That's good. Yeah. I remember when um, when I used to let's we'll just put that in there. I remember when you were teaching me, you used to get me to just pick. Firstly, I had to learn how to pick the parsley properly yeah. and then you taught me how to roll it really tight and mm -hmm. then chop it really really finely mm -hmm. remember that yep. yeah and then and then after about two years of doing that I think I started doing it when I was about maybe eight or nine mm. and then after two three years when I was about 12 yeah. maybe yeah. you let me start chopping yes. no no we started chopping tomatoes we then went up to the next part which is actually chopping the tomatoes 
Um, and then after I graduated and I was good enough at chopping the tomatoes to the right size, mm. uh, you actually let me put the bitterol with the tomatoes. Yeah. And then when I was really good, when I was, that was about 16, I think I graduated a little bit and I mixed my first tabbouleh from under your supervision. Together, yeah. So that's pretty much that's my good. apprenticeship of making good. tabbouleh. Thanks mom for teaching me, I really appreciate it. So we've got the tomato there. I've chopped up um, two tomatoes here. So what I'm gonna do is a little trick that um, I was taught was to, rather than putting the, the cracked wheat, which is the bitterol, rather than putting it in water, which is what most people do in warm water, just to get it um, to soften, I'm gonna use a coffee cup. Don't ask me how much that is, I'll probably show you. It's probably about just a small handful of cracked wheat. Not the only thing, we don't just use this for coffee, I actually use this a lot to measure. So I would say it's about that much, it's probably a big handful of cracked wheat, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to take the tomatoes and we're just going to coat the tomatoes. So I've chopped up um, another two tomatoes and I'm just going to put them in there. Now just kind of use your fingers to just make sure that they're evenly spread. Now what's going to happen is that that juice from that tomato is actually going to go into the cracked wheat and actually soften it. So we're just going to put that there. While we're here, I'm also going to put the onion. I've chopped up two small white onions. You can also use spring onion instead, or you can use both. And what you do is you just take a little bit of black pepper and just pour it on, pour it, sprinkle it. Probably three pinches, just on the onion, okay? So I'm just going to put that aside. So we're going to get some lemons. Now I'm going to start off with two lemons, the juice of two lemons, and, and see how we go and see how much juice I get out of that. Okay, so we've got our lemon. I almost forgot we actually need some mint in this salad. So I'm just going to take the leaves of probably two stems of mint, and we're just going to chop that in. The mint doesn't have to be as fine as the parsley, so we'll just chop it. Okay. Put that mint in there like that. So it's really important that you've let the parsley really, really drain. So when you've got it, just make sure that all the water is actually out of there because you do not want soggy parsley. So usually I let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, here we go. We've got our olive oil, we've got our lemon, and we've got our salt. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in probably a good two sprinklings of salt. I'm not gonna put in all of the lemon, I'm probably gonna put in half of the lemon, because what you wanna do is just taste it first. Okay, any pips that fall in, you can just take them out. And olive oil. I don't, we don't measure it, so I'm just gonna do maybe twice over, maybe three. And then we're going to mix it. Now before I do that, I'm just gonna put in some dried mint. As well, you've got the fresh mint, but I think the dried mint gives it just a little bit more of that extra flavor. Okay, so this is the part where you actually need to call someone to taste it for you, to tell you whether you need more salt, more lemon, and more oil. And basically, you just keep going through this process until you get the right flavor. Yes, master. Tabbouleh at your command. Okay, that was pretty crap. I don't know why I did the genie thing, but why not? Okay, so to put the garnish, the final touches on, I've just chopped up some cucumber and some tomatoes and I think I'll put the cucumber, f no, I'll put the tomato first. We'll just garnish it like that. You can kind of sprinkle it around if you like. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. If you like, you can maybe put just a little drizzle of olive oil if you just want to finish that off. But there you have it. There we go. Now, tabbouleh 
is really, really a beautiful accompaniment. Just on its own, it's actually a whole dish. Um, the parsley is so cleansing. You feel so good eating this. Um, I love this with um, which is like fried potatoes, um, which we make at home with tabbouleh. Um, it's just my favorite. Mm. So guys, thank you so much for watching me um, and allowing me to share my favorite recipe with you. I hope that you make this dish over and over and over again. You can never have enough tabbouleh. The parsley is so good for you. It's so cleansing. Invite your friends over, make it for your family. Um, I just hope that you pass on this beautiful tradition that we have um, about that, you know, just coming together just over a simple meal. I know um, tabbouleh does take a bit of time to make, but it is so worth it. And if you make it in big quantities, it actually will keep for a day or two. Um, usually after the second day, it's not that good. It's one of those things you probably have to eat in the first 24 hours. But just go out there, get your hands on some parsley, spend the time to make it. You will absolutely love it. It's a great summer favorite. It's a great winter favorite. It's basically, you can have it any time of year. So let me know um, if you liked it. Please leave your comments, subscribe and remember to share our channel. Thank you so much and I'll see you again next week.